I want to be perfect. No. It's more than a desire. It's a compulsion. Because if I can be exactly what you want, maybe you'll love me. The hard part about perfect is, we never are. The yearning to be enough, and enough is hard to come by. I thought if I dated enough beautiful women, I'd be a man. If I accomplished enough, I'd be successful. If I worked out enough, I'd be attractive. The worst part is, I didn't realize I was doing it. Compensating. As if being me was unacceptable. Right out of the plastic, batteries not included. I had this idea of what a man should be. And because I didn't fit that mold, I felt like I had something to prove. Like I needed to make up for what I was, and more fittingly, what I wasn't. What's fascinating about self-worth is that it is one of the few things that can't be given to you. Yet we spend how much of our time chasing validation from strangers. I tell myself development is a good thing, but it's an addiction to improvement, which underneath is a disguise for something else. Fear. 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 Maybe I'm scared that without these abilities or accomplishments, I'm less lovable. That if I could craft myself into the perfect man, I'll be able to find the perfect partner. But when we spend a lifetime trying to distance ourselves from the parts of our lives that don't fit with who we think we're supposed to be, we stand outside of our story and hustle for our worthiness by constantly performing, perfecting, pleasing, and proving. Maybe if I focus on being the best version of myself, I'll attract the right woman to me. But when does self-improvement tip into emotional avoidance? Because we're never the best version. We're works in progress. That's the point. The greatest challenge for most of us is believing that we are worthy now, right this minute. So many of us have knowingly created, unknowingly allowed, or been handed down a long list of worthiness prerequisites. When I'm dating, I don't have a long list of items the woman needs to be for me to like her. There are traits I'm drawn to, of course, but it's so much easier to accept other people than ourselves. A toxic double standard. But love and attention is so addictive, I would do whatever it took to get it. I would try to bend myself into these boxes to be what my partner wanted me to be. The deep instinct of wanting to belong, wanting to be loved, wanting to be accepted. And after a lifetime of seeing what it takes to fit in, I've learned to become a shapeshifter of sorts. I think most of us have. We'll do whatever it takes to fit in, if we believe it will meet our need for belonging. Because if we can impress you with what I've done, maybe you'll love me. There's a lot of pressure, at least in Western culture, placed on accomplishment. One of the first things that people ask you isn't who you are, but what do you do? Somewhere along the way, we adopt this dangerous and debilitating belief system. I am what I accomplish and how well I accomplish it. This is unfortunately a perpetuating cycle because at a young age, we're often recognized for what we do, not necessarily who we are. Oh, you scored an A, you got onto this team, you won a math championship. There are these small things that we do that we get recognized for and we get validation for. It's a risky cycle because at a young age, we're recognized also for what we do, not who we are. Whether that's good grades, you make a sports team. For me, I think this has been particularly challenging because for me, my 20s over the last 10 years, a lot of that work has been internal or mental or emotional. There are all these things of who I am, building this man, building these skills outside of anything kind of in this realm. And those things are hard to point to and hard to point at. So I just have to trust and know that I've made progress rather than getting any sort of external validation from the outside world that any of that means anything. But growing up, I was able to accomplish some really pretty incredible things. In high school, I went to a really good college. And so for me, I realized a lot of that was conditional, that I felt like I deserved love because of these things that I did. And that's really stuck with me over the last couple years. For me, a big piece has been learning to detach myself from my accomplishments and to know that I am enough and trying to detach from success and what that means in general. Because I realized a lot of the validation that I wanted wasn't necessarily for the things that I had done, but for the perception 
that I was successful. For a long time, I've identified with this idea of radical responsibility, and I still do, that if I'm not where I wanna be, that's on me, that I just need to do better. And I think there is something really powerful about that, taking on that responsibility for yourself. At the same time, perfectionism is addictive because when we invariably do experience shame, judgment, and blame, we often believe it's because we weren't perfect enough. So rather than questioning the faulty logic of perfectionism, we become even more entrenched in our quest to live, look, and do everything just right. So I've been nomading for four years. I haven't felt pressure to be perfect in the conventional life, but I felt that pressure to be perfect in a lot of other ways. I don't believe anymore that there's a time in your life when you just arrive and are successful and then have time for all of the other things in life that you want to do. What I'm starting to realize is that what time really boils down to is that you will never get more time, but it's about making things a priority being intentional about things that you dedicate time to and what things you're willing to let go. And what I'm starting to understand for myself is that this drive to succeed, to be successful, at least in career and with purpose, is really a mask in a way of the truth that I do want a partner in crime and that emotionally in that regard, I'm a little stunted because I haven't given that area of my life a lot of time or effort for quite a while, for some years now. I'm realizing that I keep sacrificing love and partnership in order to try and achieve greatness. And unfortunately, this is the success addiction is one that is accepted by society. It's not only accepted, but it's applauded. So often there are people that do things to the extreme, whether it's in athletics or entertainment. We're obsessed with celebrity and people that kind of go all the way to achieve greatness that we applaud these things, not realizing that often it's this intense drive that might be a mask for something else. There may be some deep insecurity that is actually driving us to do these things, to be great. If you look at my Jordan's acceptance speech, that's not a really happy speech. So I'm realizing that these addictive behaviors work a lot like substances, that they are a temporary solution for a more permanent problem. We're afraid to feel the sharp edges of life. And so unfortunately, if you numb the pain, that means you're also going to numb the joy as well. You don't get to have one without the other. Joy is as thorny and sharp as any of the dark emotions. To love someone fiercely, to believe something with your whole heart, to celebrate a fleeting moment in time, to fully engage in a life that doesn't come with guarantees, these are the risks that involve vulnerability and often pain. And I wonder what I'm running from. When I think about the friends that care about me and women in the past who have loved me, I doubt they'd tell you it was because of anything I'd done. There are pieces of who we inherently are that we don't need to practice that make us worthy of love. It's so easy for us to focus on all our broken pieces that we overlook the great ones. It's cliche, but the reason we aren't perfect is probably the most attractive, because no one can relate to perfect. It's moments of vulnerability and honesty when we feel the most seen. I've always gotten along better with the misfits, outcasts, people who dropped out and came back or had bumps along the way, because those people have stories. After life drags you through the mud a few times, you're not afraid to get dirty. Your vulnerability allows anchor points I can identify with and attach to. It tells me you have the guts to take the mask off. Let me see that side of you. And that takes courage. Shows me you've been through hell and back. And that's worth something.